Hi to anyone watching this video. Uh, my name is Gemma Coates and I'm the artist, the fluid artist behind GCC Artworks. Um, I've been going for about a year now painting again um, and I've had a YouTube video whereby I've recorded what I've done in terms of painting um, and sped it up, put a, some music over the top of it, but never actually spoken about my process. Um, I've had a number of lovely followers asking me to do just that, to put myself on the camera uh, and to talk through what I'm doing. So I've finally signed myself up to do a video. Um, also, for those that follow me on Instagram and Facebook and for all my friends and family, uh, you'll know that I've actually got a shop in the pipeline now, uh, hopefully opening in November, just manically fitting it out and everything at the minute and getting ready. But in that shop, I'm going to have a designated workspace. So that means that people can come in, see what I'm doing, see how I make what I'm making. Um, and um, I just want to add that sort of personal touch to it, really. Uh, and likewise, I want to then be able to set up sort of all the equipment and things so that I can do more videos, um, feel more about what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so this is me trying to get the confidence to actually do it. Uh, so... Yeah, so as a first first video, I thought the best thing to be to talk about would be to just sort of introduce uh, not only myself but what fluid art is. Um, I know that I, when I mention it to people, uh, get some iffy looks, <laughs> saying I'm a fluid artist. Uh, it does sound a bit dodgy, but uh, what it basically means is just using either paintings and mediums that are already liquid to create art, or diluting down. Um, thicker medium so acrylics and things to sort of like a runny consistency um, so that then you can do the various techniques of pouring them and applying them to a canvas or any substrate uh, to create pretty compositions um, so the first one there are three really that I like uh, to specialize with and that's acrylic pouring uh, resin art and alcohol inks so the first one that I had a go at uh, was um, acrylic pouring Sorry, come off. and this one was one of the first pieces I did so as you can see it creates lots of lovely effects um, and these are called cells where you get sort of the little circles and things appearing uh, and lots of texture and it looks great in the sea colours because it really does look sort of a like a picture of the planet from the sky from, um, from space so acrylic pouring basically you use acrylic paints of any form you add PVA glue um, and a paint conditioner called Floetrol, which basically just dilutes it down to make it just extra runny um, so that it pours nicely. And then you can add other additives like silicon, um, drops of isopropyl alcohol um, uh, and water to dilute it down to a right consistency and then you can obviously apply it to the canvas. There are ways of applying it to the canvas. Um, you can make all your different colours in different cups and then layer them up into one cup and then basically pour that over a canvas <laughs> or flip it onto the canvas it's called a dirty pour which again sounds a bit iffy um, but that it just then it's like a not an explosion as such but it's makes quite a mess <laughs> but lots of colours combined. So the initial colours you started with won't necessarily be the, just the colours you see. There'll be lots of sort of a mix of them and it just looks really pretty. And a lot of it pours off the side of the canvas, which, you know, is understandable. Um, but it does, it creates some really interesting abstract artwork. So great fun to do and good one to do with kids. Uh, That's what I plan on doing in the shop is doing some workshops for children uh, and doing acrylic painting because it is more of a non-toxic one and they just love making a mess. <laughs> so uh, um, after acrylic, I discovered uh, alcohol inks. And again, alcohol inks are just what they say, basically. Um, uh, uh, vibrant, vibrant colours of ink in sort of alcohol form, which means they you pour them onto whatever substrate you're working on. So you can do it on a tile. It's very good because you can wipe it clean. Um, a lot of people use Yupo paper which is just a, a high quality paper with, I think it's sort of, it's, if I'm correct, a non-absorbent surface, so the ink moves around nicely. Uh, and also what happens is obviously the alcohol dries off and it again creates patterns. Very unpredictable, <laughs> just like any kind of fluid art, which is probably what I love about it. Um, but as you can see, 
the colours are just gorgeous, just so striking um, and so bold. What is unfortunate with alcohol inks is they're, they're not UV resistant. They take a lot of prep work after you've made something to try and give them some UV protection. But even then, you can't keep them in sort of bright daylight because they will fade over time. Uh, but what I like to do is make something with inks and then uh, make prints of it, make them larger, mount them onto sort of a cradle board or something and resin over the top just so you've got a bit more of a, a longer lasting artwork. Um, but equally as striking, as striking, equally as bright and vibrant. And finally, before I waffle on too much, um, is my favourite all-time fluid artwork technique is resin. And massively temperamental, messy, sticky, ruins all your clothes, any surface pretty much it comes into contact with, uh, but it's just gorgeous. <laughs> And this is one of my favourite resin pieces to date. Um, resin that I use is basically a sort of two-part epoxy. So uh, you have your resin, you have your hardener, mix it together, and then you get generally about a half an hour time frame in which you can work, which is frustrating because you obviously can't pick and choose so much about what you're doing. You really have to work in the moment, intuitively, uh, react to what's going on in front of you and it can go wrong <laughs> it can harden up i've had one little pot of resin smoking before i've actually finished doing a painting um but it also means that you do just have to go go for it you can't hold back you can't get fussy and i'm a massively quite a perfectionist and quite a control freak so when i discovered resin it wasn't almost a natural thing that i expected to love but i just do the effects you get Again, you mix it with various sort of pigments and pastes and paints and things um, to get a range of colours and you can add in, uh, I use Resi Blast, but it's like a form of basically like a silicon uh, oil that you drop in and it can cause, cause create lacing um, and texture and movement and things like this. Uh, and I think that's what I really like about fluid painting is the movement. It is the movement you get in it and the fact that it just, like I say, the not anybody can do it. It is, takes a certain amount of practice, definitely. <laughs> but it's anyone can apply the paint to the surface and it almost works for itself to create something lovely. And then also with resin, you can add in, obviously, texture, um, create the geode-inspired pieces that I love to do and they're quite popular at the minute. Um, and just, yeah, really build up texture, build up depth and create something that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, and it also has just that gorgeous glass-like finish and it's quite hardy you can dust it in things and um and yeah it would last you a long long time but I have there's so many more things I want to do with resin um I've just at the minute obviously all going flat out with the shop but it will all be in the pipeline and likewise I want to do workshops I want to do fun classes um for people to come along and just have a play basically make a mess of my shop as opposed to your home <laughs> but um yeah so that's an introduction to me uh, and an introduction to fluid art and thanks for watching please like and subscribe if you want to see more about what I'm doing uh, or head over to Facebook Instagram or Twitter uh, and follow me at GCC Artworks and see yeah, what I get up to thanks